Hello, I'm Meredith and I'm a Makerspace Mentor in the Hub at the Grays Lake Area Public Library. Thank you for joining me for today's Art with Flair program, uh, where I'll be painting this picture entitled Winter's Eve. It's from the socialartworking.com website, um, which I get my designs from and I found them to be a great resource. Uh, while I paint today, I'll be trying to demonstrate and explain the techniques that they talk about in the instructions. But as always, if there are steps that you choose not to complete or there are details that you want to add to the picture that aren't in the instructions, please do so. This is your painting. Uh, you need to make it what you want it to be. And so be creative. And um, that's what this is all about. So. Enough introduction, let's move on to the supplies that you'll need. So here are the supplies that you'll need for today's painting. Um, we're going to start with the paint here. We'll need six colors. Uh, Mars black, phthalo blue, phthalo green, titanium white, and ultramarine blue and violet. Then I also have the step-by-step -step instructions. I have my pattern, uh, carbon paper to trace it onto the canvas and the canvas. I have my palette for mixing paints, a variety of paint brushes, some water to clean the brushes off, um, a couple rolls of uh, paper towels because I am usually messy, and then um, the picture that is useful to go by when I'm doing the step-by-steps. It helps me with the placement of where they where they need things. So let's move on to the beginning. The first step is generally tracing the uh, pattern onto the canvas and we use our um, carbon paper for that. We go ahead and lay it carbon side down on top of the canvas and then we lay the pattern over that and line it up with the edges of the canvas. Um, but if you took a look at the um, at the instructions, uh, if you read through them already, you'll see that we actually were tracing the pattern in two steps. Step one, we're going to be tracing the path here And we just take a pencil or a pen or something and we and we trace those lines and with the carbon paper below it's going to go ahead and um, and mark on the canvas and then it calls for us to do the horizon line But any other detail on here is going to be, we're going to trace later. And if you need to um, move your carbon paper because it doesn't cover the canvas completely, I just hold the pattern in place and I reach underneath and I move the carbon paper over. And then I'll go ahead and I'll get that part that can show. Okay, so I'm not going to trace anything else right now. I'm just going to do the path and the horizon line. And I'm going to set these aside for later. So now we're ready for step one. And step one calls for using three quarter inch flat brush, which would be something like this. And Mars black to paint the center path. So go ahead, get my brush in, and then just go ahead and start painting. And I'm going to make sure that I cover that carbon line, uh, because if I don't cover it with paint, it could become visible in the painting later on when you're, when you're um, finishing up. You might be able to see it, so I make sure that I cover it. Okay. 
All right, once we've done the path, it says to double load the brush, which means you're going to have one color on one side of the brush, and you're going to have another color on the other side of the brush. So you're going to have two blobs of paint on your brush. So it talks about rinsing the brush first here. We'll go ahead and rinse it. And then to double load, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab a little bit of the black on one side of my brush. And I'm going to grab, let's see, it talks about phthalo blue. So I'm going to take the phthalo blue and I'm going to add that on the other side of my brush. So I have both black and blue on here. And then it says to paint long horizontal strokes on each side of the path. And then you'll have to do that multiple times. So I'll join you again when we're finished with that part. All right, here you see the first step uh, completed. And I ended up going back and adding more just phthalo blue um, long strokes here just to make sure that the blue was kind of standing out a little bit um, so I could see patches of blue in the black. Um, and then I'm letting it dry and uh, moving on to step two. So in step two, it says use a number 12 bright brush and violet to paint the center of the skyline and refer to the photo for the placement, which is where um, keeping this handy um, comes in. So I'll take my violet and then um, a bright brush um, has a flat top and shorter bristles as opposed to something like um, like this that has longer bristles or this. You can see the difference in the length there. So the bright brush has shorter bristles and a flat top, but um, honestly, I tend to use whatever brush um, I feel like using. Sometimes I go with, a, I tend to like the smaller brushes as well because I'm not very coordinated and it helps me be a little bit more precise with my painting. So, um, taking violet and painting the center of the skyline. All right, and then rinse the brush. And then using a three quarter inch flat brush. Well, that's a half inch. But that's pretty good for me. Three quarter inch flat brush in the ultramarine blue to paint an arch over the first, over the first color, so. and blend it there where they merge.
Okay, and then using that brush and phthalo blue to paint a second arch over the ultramarine. So you can see we're just getting darker as we move away from the center here. And I make sure that I'm painting at the horizon line to make sure that I get that filled in so there's no blank canvas left there. Again, I'll try and blend it here where they merge. Okay, and then the last part of step two is to use that brush and Mars Black to paint the rest of the canvas. All right, step two is complete. I've covered the entire canvas now, the rest of the canvas with the Mars Black. Um, and now I'm on to step three. So in step three, we're going to use that three quarter inch flat brush again to mix two parts titanium white, one part phthalo blue and two parts phthalo green. So a part is basically just a brush full. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my palette to mix this color here. So one, two of titanium white, and then just so I don't get my paint all messy, um, I'll use another brush. One part phthalo blue. There's that. And then two parts phthalo green. So here's my phthalo green. One, two. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mix those up. And you can always, depending on the color that um, comes out here, you can always add uh, more of something. I think, actually, I'm going to add a little bit more white because my feeling is it should be a little bit brighter than what this is showing. And I can always add more of the other colors if I want. But ooh, that's a pretty turquoisey color. Okay, so that wants us to take this color. and to use this mix to paint short stippled brush strokes across the top of the sky. Um, stippling is just to create dots of paint. So small dots of paint. So I'm just gonna use my brush to make those small dots. I'll turn it around, turn it as I go, to kind of create different directions. And here's where referring to the painting or to the photograph really helps. And your dots, your stippling um, 
will probably look completely different from mine because everybody has a different style of painting. Okay, kind of looks like what they've done on the in the picture. Kind of, sort of. All right. And then I rinse the brush and then let it dry. So we're going to let the painting dry. And if you don't want to be patient and let it dry on its own, you can use a hair dryer, just a, a regular hair dryer on low. And um, it actually, these paints, acrylic paints dry um, pretty quickly anyway. And the hair dryer will just make it dry in just a, a couple of minutes. So. So in between step three and step four is where we transfer the rest of the pattern called transfer pattern part two, where we're going to be tracing the details, um, basically all the trees and the lamps and the stuff that we didn't do the first time around, which is why they wanted um, us to let the painting dry first so that all your paint was dry. Now I didn't, I did use a hair dryer, but I didn't use it quite enough. And so I've been tracing the trees here. Um, and I've been pushing fairly hard as I as I trace because I wasn't sure if I'd even really be able to see anything when I lift this up. And what I've discovered, let me just finish this tree here, and then I'll lift it up and show you. You may might not be able to see, so I lift my pattern. I I try and hold it down in one spot so it doesn't shift. Otherwise, my trees will be all out of whack. Um, and then when I lift the carbon paper, you can see some of my paint wasn't completely dry, which is why they want it dry. And you might not be able to see it, but there, I do see an outline of the tree trunks and the branches traced onto the painting. So I will be able to follow those outlines when it comes time to paint the tree, the trees in that. Um, of course, this is one of those areas where you can personalize your painting. If you don't like these trees, if you think you can um, do better ones, or if you just don't want this many, or if, um, you know, for some reason you just these just aren't cutting it for you. Um, do your own thing. Um, put more trees in, fewer trees. Uh, make them a different style. These are only suggestions on the pattern here. So, um, Have fun tracing, and I'll see you back for the start of step four. Step four uses the number six bright brush. Again, that's the shorter bristles with the flat top and Mars black to paint the trees. And um, I have a selection of smaller brushes here as well to get the, um, the small areas of the trees, um, you know, once it gets up into the, the little brick. Uh, branchy area. So Mars black and then I'm just going to look for those tree trunks. And it really doesn't, I can't imagine it matters very much if you follow along in the lines as long as you get a basic tree shape. So for instance, the, the, these root areas, I, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not following exactly how I traced it. It's really just more important to get the, the basic outline of, oops, of the tree trucks. 
and then of course um, like the lamps and stuff too so some of these smaller things I'm gonna go ahead and, and use them oops that's still kind of big And you can always add water to your paint too, to thin it out. It makes it easier to do detailed lines or thin lines, uh, like some of those really thin tree trunks. So I'm just gonna, I'm adding some water to my Mars Black to thin it out and make it easier to flow across the canvas here. looks better. Alright, I'm going to try this again. That's working better. Okay, so I'll leave you to go ahead and paint your trees. Um, that is all of step four, so this will probably take a while. There are a lot of little details here. But I'll be back. So I'm partway through painting the tree trunks. And I just want to say I'm actually finding it more useful to refer back to the pattern to see where the tree trunks are supposed to be and where the how the branches branch off than I am um, finding use in looking at the actual finished picture, um, which this will be more useful when I'm adding the snow and the highlights and that, I'm sure. Uh, but right now, actually, I'm referring to the pattern to help me know where to place the trees because I am having some difficulty seeing what I traced onto the canvas. All right, so I have, um, I have the tree trunks painted now, uh, which adds some nice detail, even though I can't really see them very well. Hindsight, I probably would have added more blue to my original horizontal strokes down here by the path, but um, I believe some of this highlighting that we're going to be doing in the next two steps will really help make things pop. So the first uh, step is um, to use a number 12 bright brush and titanium white to dry brush horizontal strokes in the center of the path and in the area on either side of the path. And then you refer, refer to the picture to help you see where they are placing them. And, um, dry brushing is using a clean dry brush. You don't get it wet at all. And you just take a little bit of paint and you, and you just um, lightly apply. So you, you, you're not trying to cover, you're not trying to cover anything. You're just literally trying to dry brush. You're trying to, um, you're just trying to add this color on top of the other colors so that you can see the color um, through it. That makes sense. So there, so like that. Okay, and then um, do that on either side of the path as well. So it kind of looks like they're doing it like under the trees maybe a little bit.
And that's why you don't want very much paint on the brush. You don't want it to be, you don't want to really be painting. You're just sort of adding these highlights here. And then we're going to use the number 12 bright brush and ultramarine blue to paint random strokes in the treetops. So let's see how that goes. Ultramarine blue, random strokes. Even say where or anything like that. So, I guess this is um, those areas where it's pretty much up to interpretation. Right there. Okay. All right. So, that would be the end of step five. Last step, step six, um, has a number of different bullet points to it, and uh, we're going to be using a lot of titanium white here um, and a variety of different brushes. So this is where we really highlight and spotlight things to, to make the, the details of the painting stand out. So the first part of step six is to use the titanium white to paint short stippled brush strokes across the trees. So again, like we did with the sort of teal color and the ultramarine blue, we're going to be doing with white as well. And stippling is that creating small dots of paint uh, technique. So go ahead and um, start doing that. Sure, sort of shows these more towards the bottom of the leafy area than the top. So I'm going to cluster mine a little bit lower here. Okay. So using the same brush and titanium white still paint snow drifts around the base of the trees and along the side of the path. So, go ahead and sort of define the edge of the path. And then the base of the trees. It looks like they're still stippling, basically. I have to figure out where the base of my trees are. I think there's one here. And I think there's one here. Oh, there's one here.
The third bullet point in step six asks us to use titanium white to paint the lamplight globes and to use a number two round brush, which is one of these, um, it has a taper. It's more long and thin, and then it, it uh, tapers to a point. So it's better for detail work like this. And then also paint the reflection from the lamp lights onto the path using wavy strokes. So we'll give that a shot in a minute here. Work on the lamp lights. And you might just to cover, make sure you're covering the background paint, you might end up needing to give these a couple of coats. I'm just kind of looking at or looking at mine and thinking, hmm, maybe a little bit of the purple blue that's shining through, showing through. We'll see. I'll let it dry. All right, and then um, it says use same brush and titanium white to dry brush highlights on inside of trees facing lights. Okay, so I'm going to add the highlights and dry brushing. I'm actually going to use a different a different brush that hadn't been used already. Dry brushing is, um, you don't want your brush to have gotten in the water and you just add a little bit of paint on it and then stroke so it doesn't, it doesn't completely cover where you're painting and you, you want it that way. You want to just add A hint of the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add these highlights like so on all of the trees. All right for that second to last um, bullet point, um, adding the highlights. I did um, sort of overdo it a little bit on some of my trees, so I went ahead and, and went back and I grabbed some black and I and I I redid some of the tree trunks and sort of um, diminished my white highlights uh, in places where I, I just got a little bit uh, carried away, like here. Um, because I, I did want it to be a little bit more subtle than what I had it on some of those trees. So um, now I'm on to the last bullet point, which is to use a number six bright brush and ultramarine blue to add additional reflections onto the path. 
So let me go ahead and I'll just use this one, I think. Okay, so I've got my ultramarine blue here and I'm referring to the photo and it looks like they just Sure, what's reflecting there, but all right, there we go. So, rinse brush and then uh, and then uh, that's supposedly that should be finished. And um, I think I'm going to go ahead and and like I said, I'm going to give these a second coat because the purple is showing through. And um, feel free to touch up any other areas on your painting that you're not satisfied with. You can always completely paint over something. Or change it up a little bit. For instance, I didn't, uh, I missed one set of lights down here. Instead of having eight lights, I only have six because I just completely missed them when I was doing the tracing and then when I was doing the painting in the tree trunks with the black. Okay, so there's the finished painting. I'll see you in a minute. And here we have our completed picture, uh, Winter's Eve. I hope you enjoyed painting it. And I hope that you enjoy that you join me for next month's Art with Flair program through the Grays Lake Area Public Library. In the meantime, this is Meredith saying so long and take care.